Hi everybody, I'm Coral and I am going to talk to you today about owls because people don't know as much about owls as they should. Uh, I guess a minor content warning, um, there are a couple of photos of owl skulls. They're, they're just skulls, they're not especially gross. And I will talk about the fact that owls are hunters and do kill rodents. Um, there is a drawing of an owl pouncing on a rodent, but there is nothing any grosser or make more explicit than that. Uh, mostly this is just me being psyched about owls being great. But if any of the things I listed will bother you, this is not the talk for you. All right, that all said, uh, we're gonna start with a sad fact. It's one of my favorite facts, but, but it's a little bit sad. Um, we associate owls with wisdom, right? We, we associated them with Athena back in the day, the goddess of wisdom. Um, and now we associate them with learning new languages. <laughs> um, they must be really intelligent, right? Nah, sorry. Uh, they are not. But there are really good reasons for this. And even though they're not especially smart, they are still really, really good. Um, we don't need them to be intelligent to love them. They are brilliantly adapted for the lives that they lead, and they are just very exciting birds. Um, they're good for farmers. I Well, for farms, I guess I should say. Uh, fun fact, each brood of barn owls, so each breeding cycle of a pair of barn owls will go through approximately 3,000 rodents. So if you are a farmer and you have a barn owl, well, two, then you are very happy. And also they're just really neat. Probably their most striking adaptation is their eyes, right? They are huge. Um, this, by the way, is a photo of a Eurasian, Eurasian eagle owl, uh, which is my favorite kind of owl, I think. Um, real big eyes, really good for seeing in the dark, uh, which makes sense. We, we are not going to look in great detail at this scientific diagram, do not worry. Um, but the reason that they're not very smart is that there's not a lot of room in that head for a brain, and I think that's funny. Um, if you look at the eye diagram in the top left, you'll note that it is kind of conical. It is not an eyeball in the same sense that a human has an eyeball, right? Uh, in the bottom left, it's very small, and I am sorry if it's hard to see on your screen, but they show a skull of a passerine, which is just any kind of perching bird, like a robin or a, probably a parakeet or just, yeah, any perching bird. Um, normal birds have a certain amount of room behind their eyes. Uh, owls really don't. Uh, it's, it's a very small space for brains uh, because the eyes are just so good. And you can see in the owl skull just how big a space is needed for these fantastic eyes. Uh, you want to tick off an owl enthusiast? Um, show the media with owls moving their eyes around. Um, I still have not seen Legend of the Guardians. You would think, oh, Coral's really big into owls. Of course they've seen, no, no, uh, I can't handle it because the owls move their eyes. Um, real life owls cannot move their eyes. It is not a thing. So when an owl wants to look around, it turns its head, right? Um, Common misconception, no, an owl cannot turn its head 360 degrees around, it would it would pass out. Um, in fact, to be able to turn its head 270 degrees, it still requires, there's a special set of, just the way the veins in its neck work, it's very different than ours, for instance, uh, and their vertebrae are arranged in a specific way that makes it okay for them to turn their heads around 270 degrees. This is still huge though. This is this is pretty neat and a really cool adaptation that makes up for the eyes. Um, now the point, of course, of all of these eye-focused adaptations is so that they can see in the dark, uh, usually at great distance in order to hunt. Their night vision, super powerful. This, by the way, is a great horned owl. Um, and without being able to see the eyes, I cannot, consistently tell a great horned owl from a Eurasian eagle owl. Um, Eurasian eagle owls have orange eyes. Just a fun fact. Anyway, so eyes. 
huge, very important owl adaptation and one of their most prominent features. You might think, okay, their next feature is probably going to be their ears, and you're right. But the ear tufts, the things that we think of as having to do with owl's ears, they, they don't. Um, the ear tufts have literally nothing to do with their hearing. Uh, we don't actually know for sure what they're used for. Uh, it could be camouflage. They kind of help them hide beside tree trunks. That's a possibility. Uh, it may be part of attracting mates or intimidating competition to prevent them from attracting their mates. Uh, we don't know, uh, unless there's been research about it really recently. We, we did not know uh, as of a couple of years ago, for sure. Uh, so yeah, ear tufts, not part of the ears. Although I do like this photo because it hints at something that is important about owl's ears. Uh, that we'll talk about in a minute. You can see that the tufts are really uneven, right? One's much higher than the other. Um, again, nothing to do with hearing, but it's a, it's a good spoiler for what their hearing is like. Uh, the facial disc, you would think, oh, okay, this probably helps them see. No, no, <laughs> it helps them hear. Um, it funnels sound really well toward these fantastic owl ears. Um, these are, let's see, this is a great gray owl on the left. They're extremely large. We will talk about that later. Um, and on the right is a barn owl, um, which I think they're super creepy, but also their faces kind of make a heart and you have to like that. Anyway, uh, so facial discs. The other, the main thing uh, I would say about owls hearing that's really special is their ears are asymmetrical. So sound hits them at different times based on where their prey is and they can pinpoint really, really exactly where something that they want to eat is moving around. Um, most owls need both sight and hearing, um, but not all of them do. Uh, and exactly which ones is some matter of, there are still papers being written about it, I guess. Uh, but a great gray, remember we talked about great grays, uh, that guy on the left, they can hunt in the snow uh, where obviously they could not see a rodent below the snow. Uh, but they can hear it well enough uh, with the with their facial disc, with their uneven ears, that they can catch a mouse without, or a rodent of any kind, I suppose, without ever seeing it below snow. I think that's exciting. Uh, but again, most of them combine both their amazing hearing and their amazing eyesight. And when they catch prey, they catch prey with their talons. Um, this is just a really nice drawing of the the stages an owl goes through. Cause we think of owls as kind of like number three there where it's sort of a number four, where it's sort of, it's, it's, it's flying head first. That is how we think of owls. But when they go to catch something, they swap direction really quickly and they come at it feet first. Um, if you have a disagreement with an owl, the thing you need to watch for is not the beak. It is the feet, the talons. Um, <laughs> I guess this is the last thing that some uh, some owl prey see. Um, this was a photo on an AP story about barred owls in, I think it was Seattle, attacking people. I do not know for sure that it is a real photo or that it is a barred owl. It almost seems too good, um, but it's, <laughs> I, I thought it was very evocative of the point I wanted to make. Also notice that as it, as it goes to attack, it's got three claws in front and it's got one claw in back, right? But if you look at an owl that's perching, it's got two in front and two in back. That is, I always wanna make sure I have to, I say the right thing, it's zygodactyl. They are zygodactyl. Um, they can actually move those toes around, one of those toes around, um, and this is what they look like when they perch. This is, once again, a uh, great horned owl. Um, I have held one of these, and I will tell you, really for any owl, even a very small owl, but especially for an owl of this size, 
you have to have gloves. Uh, their feet are so strong. And yes, extremely fuzzy looking, but so strong. Uh, without gloves, they will injure you. Um, as previously mentioned, they're not super smart. It is possible to startle them, and their reflex when they're startled is to grab on hard with those extremely muscular feet. Um, so yeah, uh, raptor gloves, necessary. Uh, we think of owls as being nice and round and fluffy, and they are fluffy. Uh, they're not that round, actually. They have very long legs. Um, and I just think that's funny. I like to refer to owls as the cats of the sky uh, because they are these adorable, sweet looking animals that are actually deadly hunters. Uh, comparisons with intelligence are left up to the listener. Uh, but because we make these comparisons between cats and owls and how, how sweet and adorable they look despite being pretty deadly, uh, it's reasonable to wonder, are they also soft? Are owls soft like cats? Yes, they are. They are so soft. I have touched an owl. They are so soft, um, which is delightful. But it is also one of their excellent adaptations. Um, the soft feathers muffle sound so that when an owl flies over you, it is completely silent. Uh, and really good bird shows will actually like do this. Uh, the National Aviary, if you go to their indoor bird show, they have an owl fly over you and you do not hear anything. And then they have literally any other bird fly over you and you hear a lot. Um, and then they show you, you know, an owl's feather is very soft and another bird's feather is much more, uh, and usually I think they show you a different raptor's feather and it's much more um, tense. Uh, no, rigid. It's much more rigid. Uh, that's a better way to, yeah, it's useful for other birds to have these rigid feathers because it allows them to fly faster and to take off faster. Um, owls are very slow on takeoff. Uh, an actually sad fact that I don't like very much is that owls, uh, one of their more common injuries is that they're hit with cars because they, they just can't take off fast enough. Um, so yes, incredibly soft, incredibly silent, downside, kind of slow. Um, here is a close-up of the edge of an owl's feather, so you can see how soft it is. And this was new to me, but the top of an owl's feather also looks incredibly soft. And all of this is just to muffle the air and to make it so that they fly silently. Up to this point, it has been things that I think are basically true of all owls, but there are 200 different species of owls. Um, this is nowhere near all of them. This is just supposed to convey there are many. Um, so there's there's some variation, right? Uh, not all of them are nocturnal. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, their nesting habits vary. Some nest in the trees, some nest in the ground. Um, some are very small. The elf owl is the world's smallest owl. It is five inches uh, from the top of its head to the end of its tail. It is 40 grams. That's like about one and a half ounces. Um, that is about half the weight of a cockatiel. So a cockatiel is the little gray bird that I have as pets. Uh, that is very, very small. And their wingspan is 10 and a half inches. On the opposite end of the scale is the Blagus and Spish Owl. Uh, they live in Japan. They uh, can weigh up to 10 pounds, uh, be 28 inches long, and their wingspan is over five feet. Now I list them as the heaviest rather than the largest, because remember the great gray? They are slightly longer sometimes. Eagle owls in general can be longer than these guys uh, at 32 inches. Snowy owls live above the Arctic Circle, so they are not always nocturnal, right? Uh, sometimes they have to be awake during the day. Also, they are sexually dimorphic. Uh, on the left is a female and on the right is a male. Boreal owls also live up north, and which one's male and which one's female? Eh. Um, <laughs> impossible to tell. Uh, 
it's actually dangerous for a boreal, a male boreal owl to go courting because uh, the females are just slightly bigger. So is he courting a female or a male owl who's bigger than him? It's hard to say. Anyway, owls are great. Um, I love them and you should love them too. Thanks for watching.